Good evening. Welcome everyone to our Revelation Bible study. Um, my computer is having some problems, so let me see what I can do to alleviate that before we get started. Don't pour any more water on it. No, no, that won't work. It wants me to close some windows. So let's do that. All right. Now let's see if it likes what I'm doing. Well, it didn't yell at me. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, let's begin with prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening and for all that are attend in attendance here that wish to study your word. Grant us understanding hearts. Grant us the love of Christ that we share that with one another. Grant us understanding that is beyond what we can personally understand. You gave this vision to John and it's things that are beyond human understanding. So much so that it has to be written in symbolic language but you hold the key. So help us to understand that this evening. Help us to draw closer to you as we study. Because we confess that you believe us, that you, be, that we, that you love us, and that Christ has made us your precious child, we now turn these petitions over to you that trouble our hearts and our minds. Be with Jack as he awaits PET scan results and grant him healing through that and through the biopsy coming on Friday. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Continue to be with Tom and Sharon who are under the weather. Grant them complete restoration of health. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Be with our brother, Reverend Art, uh, in a uh, uh, appointment for a lung doctor that he has tomorrow and then a Friday on a heart catheterization. Uh, and grant him understanding and peace with what he's going through. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Be with Andy who fell and cut his leg and who also has dementia. Grant him complete health and healing and somebody to care for him. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. With Greg, grant him a safe trip back from Indiana. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Be with all, with all of those around us who are unsaved. Be with us as the church. Be with our witnesses. We go out together in mission and also our personal witnesses. You plant people in our midst that we would be encouraged to share Jesus with them from our heart and our mind. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. be with Sebastian, uh, uh, Gabriel's son, and with all of our children and grandchildren, that you would watch over them, keep them safe, but even more so that they might know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. be with Vir the family of Virginia Tim, who recently passed. Grant them faith in Jesus Christ and in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Lord God, be with me and grant me healing and restoration of head to toe and body and soul. Allow me to continue being the shepherd here in, uh, of your flock uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit granted to me from you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Be with our event this weekend, uh, our visit with Joy Marcus. Uh, may her witness and uh, story uh, grant us encouragement in our faith and in our witness. And may we see how powerfully your hand works even in the, in the hardest of situations, even among the Muslim community, where, where your truth is made known, faith comes. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. With Nancy, who has uh, been diagnosed with bladder cancer, grant her complete health and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Be with Kitty, Lord. We, uh, we pray a prayer of thanks that the shingles that she has has, uh, has uh, weakened and lessened, but... Uh, we ask that you would be with her and grant her uh, restoration from the numbness, numbness that has attacked her forehead. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Be with uh, Norma and grant her uh, uh, answers to some of the problems she's having with Facebook and other things with her computer. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
be with Lanny and Vicki, Keith and John as they continue to travel. Uh, bring them safely back home to us. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Be with our sister Vicki Fakalak and grant her continued healing and be with Steve. Uh, support him as he supports her. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Be with our sister Sue Berger, who's uh, struggling through pneumonia and strep throat. Grant her healing. Grant her an enjoyable birthday, even though she is under the weather. And be with JR. Grant him complete health and healing as well. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With Michelle, who needs medical attention for a brain injury, that she might find uh, doctors who can help her with this, and uh, may she be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask for good weather this weekend for all the events that are going on. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that your uh, hand of peace would be uh, amongst the people in Ukraine. We ask that you would put an end to that war there. Be with all the innocent civilians as they suffer. Uh, work in the hearts and minds of leaders that they would uh, end this violence. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Be with our dear sister Connie. She continues to grieve the loss of Joe. Uh, come alongside her with your love and your presence. Allow us to be your presence in her life. The loving hand of Christ around her and comforting her. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. All these things we commend over into your care, trusting in your great mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people respond. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right, we made it partway through uh, Revelation chapter 8. And as a quick review before we go on and read the next section, I thought I would uh, go through what we have uh, experienced up till this point. So Revelation chapter 8 began with the opening of the seventh seal. And what that brought on was 30 minutes or a half hour of silence. We talked about three being a complete time period. It's not a full time period like seven is, but it's a complete time period with a start and uh, that's governed by the Lord. And this was, uh, we also read how before the Lord there's silence. So in God's presence in heaven. Also, it's kind of a reset. It's in between, like in between acts of a play. It's that intermission where the scene is reset because now that we've come to uh, seal number seven being open, we're going to turn back, go back right back to the beginning, and once again cover this time period from Christ's ascension to his return, but look at it from a different point of view now. And that's what's coming up in, in Revelation 8. We found that there were seven angels with seven trumpets. And what's the magic number seven mean? Only the God works. only God can take care of do it. The, the works that only God can take care of on earth. And we think back of creation. Uh, by the seventh day, creation was done. And so these seven angels are going to announce. That we said that uh, trumpets are warning, warnings of things to come. So these are all the warnings that need to be put out of things that are going to happen between Christ's ascension and Christ's return. The full number of warnings that need to be uh, mentioned. Then we also said that there was another angel, uh, uh, an angel different than these seven angels, and he scoops up some fire from the incense altar, and he begins to dump it on the earth. And we said that this action is a continuing action. So his dumping these ashes or these live coals is going to continue throughout this vision. And those represent God's judgment. That's judgment on the unbelievers. And it doesn't necessarily mean fire. It just means God bringing judgment on our believers. Uh, and we'll also see that's going to be active in the, uh, in, in the uh, trumpets, too, as well. We got through our first trumpet. And anybody remember what that trumpet, uh, what happened when he sounded it? Hail and fire on the earth, a third of the earth burned up. Yeah, we're going to see repeated over and over again with these trumpets, it's a third of the earth. You think back to what we discussed when it was the four, the, the horsemen, the four horsemen, they were allowed to affect a quarter of the earth. These things affect a third of the earth, which means it's only part of the earth, it's not the whole thing, but it's a larger part than what the horsemen were able to affect. So things as we progress along now are getting more serious worse. But all these things are happening right now. 
The four horsemen riding? No. Things these trumpets warn about? No. And as Norma said, if you think about it, fire burning up the earth and hail. Have you guys seen that recently? Is any of that going on right now in the world? Only in California. Yeah. California's got wildfires raging. Other areas of the world, wildfires are raging. What about the, the kind of storms that bring large hail? Yeah. Have they been they've been wrecking havoc in this country and other places. That's it. Yep. So what this angel is warning us about is happening right now. It's going to continue to happen, and as we get closer and closer to the end, it will get worse. We look back how uh, this trumpet reminded us of one of the plagues of Egypt. You remember that? There was hail and fire that struck uh, down and it harmed the crops and the livestock and other animals, and it even harmed mankind. Uh, but somebody was spared. Do you remember who was spared that in Egypt? The Israelites, yeah. They were spared that. And this, was, and this, this uh, uh, plague was sent by God to prove to the Egyptians that your gods aren't real because they had gods that they prayed to to try to make this plague stop. But did it? It did not stop until Moses prayed to the Lord God. So these things came to shake people off out of their uh, uh, self-assurance that they can handle things or whatever else they're trusting in and to turn them to trust in the one and only Lord God. It was true in Egypt, and it's true today when God allows these things to happen. With that, that's where we left off. Uh, um, Revelation 8 to 9. Ignore that 6 to 12. We don't want to quite do that yet. So let's go back and look at, we need to start at Revelation 8 to 9. Somebody want to read Revelation 8 to 9? It's on the screen. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Looking at our uh, study guide. What happens when the second angel blows his trumpet? Specifically, what does he see? Thrown into the sea. And the sea becomes blood. blood. That's, that's, that's been depicted in movies. Uh, in the X-Files one time, I saw it. <laughs> uh, other places, though, is one of the signs of the apocalypse. So John is seeing something that uh, is kind of beyond his description and his understanding. But when you think about a mountain burning with fire, and something being thrown into the sea. Does anything come to mind? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I actually was looking for a, a picture. I didn't have time to put it in here. But if you go online and, and, and search, it's amazing when you see lava going into the sea, what it does. Hot lava, waters roar and foam. And if you had a, go ahead, Penny. We flew over a volcano that was erupting in Hawaii and watched it going and you could actually see the fire, even if it's in the water, continue to burn. It's far down and you could look at the fire. Uh, I didn't see anything like that. Unless it was un unbelievable, really. Was, yeah. So this is something like that, probably beyond that. And this has more far reaching than one volcano dumping lava into the sea. This affects a third of the sea. And what happens? A third of the living creatures die, and a third of the ships are destroyed. So it messes up the ocean, messes up shipping, and it messes up sea creatures. Do we see humans directly affected by this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Directly. Well, the if you were on a ship and it's destroyed, you would be. Not directly, but indirectly, right? This is indirectly. This is not aimed directly at human beings. Okay. But no, we they, they suffer through what this is all aimed at nature, nature, okay. what nature does and how we're affected by nature. Because, yeah, you're right, Faith. We, it would affect, we get a lot of food from the sea. And there's a lot of shipping. By the way, shipping problems. 
you, is there anything going on in our right. world now? Yeah. Right. A train. <laughs> No, no, because now they're worried about the strike for, for the trains. Well, there you go. It, it's kind of one of the same, isn't it? The supply chain has been interrupted. Delivery of goods. It's all tied in with this trumpet. These things are going to happen. In the same way, they affect us. Not directly, but either. How is this similar to the Egyptian plague described in each in Exodus 7? So let's go there and uh, let's read Exodus 7. Somebody want to read these verses? So I pop them on the screen. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is going out into the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile to meet him and take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. But so far you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, by this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with a staff that is in my hand will strike the water and it and that is the Nile and this should turn into blood. The fish in the Nile shall die, and the Nile will stink, and the Egyptians will grow weary of drinking water from the Nile. And the Lord, let me continue. And the Lord said to Moses, "And say to Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their canals, and their ponds, and the pools of water, so that they may become blood." And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and in the vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, he lifted up the staff and struck the water in the Nile. And all the water in the Nile turned into blood. And the fish in the Nile died and the Nile sank so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He would not listen to them. And as the Lord had said, Pharaoh turned and went into his house and he did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile for water to drink. So they could not drink the water of the Nile. See some correspondence here with what this, angel, this trumpet angel sound. Yep. Water and sea creatures are messed up. Now in this plague, it's more fresh water. The trumpet angel was the ocean. But we're going to see there's elements of the next trumpet that are also uh, affected here. Notice that uh, what is the reaction of Pharaoh? Turned his back on it. It was meant to move the people, wasn't it? And in fact, if Pharaoh would have let the people go, none of the other plagues would have happened. And there's going to be the same reaction to this trumpet that the Lord sounds. It's meant to grab hold of people to take notice of people. Well, questions or comments? How long did the water stay like blood? Good question, Gary, and I don't know. Okay. I turn back. I know there was uh, one plague that, that it does tell us that Moses changed things back, but I don't remember if this one or not. Most of the plagues stayed like that until Moses commanded that they not. So it was proof positive to the Pharaoh that it wasn't just an act of chance. It wasn't anything to do with their gods. It was the Lord God who said it starts and it stops through his uh, prophet Moses. Okay. You go back here. Stuff. You would have thought that the Egyptians would have like turned on the Pharaoh and said, get them out of here so that we don't have to do it. You would think. <laughs> Let, let's now in your Bibles read Revelation chapter 8, 6 through 12.
count the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood. The, a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. Read through uh, verse 13. Fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of the light might be darkened, and on the third and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead. Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth at the blast of the other trumpets that the three angels were about to blow. Okay. Should have had you read that earlier. But, uh, there you go. So we've been through the first trumpet angel. We talked about what happened there. Now we're on to the second trumpet angel. Uh, these are verses 10 through 11. The third angel, uh, well, we actually went, we went through the first two. Yes. The, third, the third angel blew his trumpet and a great star fell from heaven. What do we call stars that fall from heaven? Falling stars. Meteors, right? Yeah. Blazing like a torch. Does that describe a meteor? Yeah. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. Once again, John has seen something symbolic. Does this mean it's actually going to be a meteor? I don't know. But this is kind of what John is picturing. He doesn't know the word meteor, but he, he's describing it. And what does it do? It falls on a third and messes up a third of the rivers and springs of water. So uh, here it's affecting fresh water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters become Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. As we turn to our, uh, our note copy under verses 10 and 11. Question, what happens when this angel blows its trumpet, and how does it affect things on Earth? I've answered that already, so you guys got to read. It is, what might this great star blazing like a torch be similar to? Meteor. And what happens when he blows it? When, when the trumpet blows, how does it affect things? Why is it that everything a third, a third, a third? Because God doesn't want it to be a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you go back to the, uh, as I said before, the, uh, um, the four horses. The four horsemen affected just a part of the earth, a quarter. This is more than a quarter. It's a bigger slice, but it's still only a portion, which tells us this is worse. These things are going to encompass more of the earth at one time. A third is, uh, is a number. Oh, look in your... Uh, I was wondering if there was some... What does it say under the number three? Half of seven, which is the full amount, right? Seven is the full amount of God's working on earth, whatever he's doing. Three is half of that and says it is a what? Definitely limited period of time. So this is a definitely limited scope of these trumpets, what they affect on earth. And the amount of that scope is decided by God, but it's not the entire earth. But it's more than what we saw before. It's worse. I answer your question? Yeah. It was a good one, Faithy. It was. I have a note on the uh, study guide here. Oh, um, coming from heaven. Does that clue you in on anything? If something is coming from heaven, not don't think so much as I know stars are in the. Uh, it's in, coming in, from God? Yes. Yes. That's John's point here. 
as bad as this is, this is coming from the hand of God. In fact, from the one who opened the seals from Jesus. This is part of what must happen before his return. It's not like something he's allowing to happen. It's something that he's making. Go do this. Yep. It's not the devil doing it. Jesus saying, ah, I'm not going to worry about this. Right now. No. He's initiating it. I have a note on your study guide. It says, the name of the star is Wormwood. And a third of the waters become Wormwood. Wormwood is a real plant. It's an herb uh, that's known for its intense bitterness. In both the Old Testament and in the New Testament, to drink water mixed with wormwood symbolized God's judgment and punishment. It was drinking his punishment upon yourself because it was so bitter. It also symbolically represents the sorrow and bitterness found in the human heart that refuses to repent. Was that what was in the sponge that the yeah, Roman soldier? Mm -hmm. that was no, that was vinegar. What made you think of it when you said yeah. that? Yeah. 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 So I've heard some think that it had uh, it was vinegar, but there was also some kind of a chemical in there, a herb that would numb the pain that they gave to uh, right. help those who were in, in a, as a merciful action in Christ. <laughs> he had to experience all the pain. But suffering. Didn't, didn't no, this was different. Right. No, it wasn't one. Good question. So what's going on here? How is this similar to something the Israelites suffered in Exodus? Uh, we've got Exodus 15, 23 to 25. Somebody care to read that on the screen? Norma, can you do that? Sure. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses saying, what shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a log, and he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and a rule, and there he tested them. So the Lord brought them to the spring that was bitter to test them to see how they would react. And of course, they failed. Instead of turning to him and asking for his help, they grumbled. And we're going to have the same reaction from the unbelieving world. Um, and by the way, when we think about the fresh water being spoiled, is, is that happening anywhere in the world right now? Yeah. Everywhere. Well, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> All over Michigan. Oh, no. Well, like most big cities, they haven't kept up on what they should have as far as their infrastructure. So, I mean, those connect. so you can see these very things are currently happening right now. I, I know that there's certain areas of the Great Lakes that you catch fish from there, you aren't supposed to eat them. Uh, inland lakes that you're not supposed to eat them. These are all examples, perhaps early on examples, and things will get worse. Questions or comments? The idea of wormwood spoiling the water is symbolic. God's not going to take a big branch of wormwood and throw it in the water. It's all symbolic, but we see what he's talking about. We can understand it uh, in our day and age. Okay. Verse 12. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light might be darkened, and a third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise, a third of the night. So what happens when this angel blows his trumpet? The sun is affected. Oh, I kind of see that happening now because right over Michigan, the haze is smoke from California. Imagine that. And, and if it gets thick enough, it blots out the sun, the sun. and the moon. How is this reminiscent of the sixth seal in Revelation 6, 12 to 17? And let's turn back there. Somebody want to read these verses on the screen? When he opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as a sackcloth, and the full moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. Mm -hmm. I varnished, vanished 
like a scroll that is being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone free and slave hid themselves in the caves among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who was seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of the wrath has come and who can stand. Does anybody remember what this great day of wrath was when the sixth seal was opened? It was the end of the world. Jesus. Right before Jesus returns, things go bonkers. And do you see echoes of that with this trumpet? It talks about stars not shining. So we see it's not only right before the end, we see the precursors of that leading up to it. We also see it in Matthew 24, verses 29 to 30. Will, you want to read these for me? Do you mind? She there? What is that? Did you mute, Jill? Mm -mm. No. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the son of man and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So here's the Lord giving us a little precursor to what will happen in those last days. Kind of a reminder that that day is coming and you see, can see echoes of it now. And uh, as with the other trumpets, there are echoes back to what happened with Israel uh, in Egypt. And for that, let's go to Exodus 10, 21 to 23. Volunteer to read. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they lived. Can you imagine if it was that dark for three days? <laughs> so whatever this is, if it was to happen here, it would affect all of our, uh, all of our lighting, all our electricity, and all the lamps and stuff we have. If you, if you've probably been up north, you ever been up north? And, oh. Yeah. You go walk outside and there's, yeah, yeah, it's a darkness we aren't really used to, is it? No street lights. It's scary. We had that blackout that night, so. Exactly. Um, I don't know. Can I put that in here? That, that is right, yeah. Um, I, I think, I don't know if it was 97 or later, but I, I was going to put that in here and I, I didn't put pictures in, but yeah. Do you guys remember that? I don't know if it affected you up here. It didn't it affect. It affected everybody in Ohio. And it came to the, the food transformer was in Ohio. And it grew to a small Yeah. Up, all it, the way up here. It affected where I was. In Ypsilanti. But I, I think I had electricity here because I remember my daughter finally packed up the kids, even though they had a generator, took them up to the cabin. Because up north, they still had it. Yep. Um, right around here, a little bit south of here, was kind of the dividing line. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to close all the stores, and the stores, one I worked at, didn't have uh, a generator. So I sat there for two days. <laughs> and uh, I think, I don't know if I went home or somebody spelled me, but I remember coming back the second day, and it was obvious stuff was going bad. So I remember uh, we had a gas stove, gas work. So I cooked a steak on the gas stove. It's <laughs> going bad anyway. <laughs> it, was, it was a drag. I mean, you, uh, I, Jenny was, uh, had, you know, the, the, the YMCA camp or the YWCA, there's a camp down. Uh, yeah. yeah, she was there. 
And so when we drove up, we saw gas stations up here that had gas because you couldn't get gas down there. So I remember there was a great big line and we gassed up, but that was that was a pain in the ass. That was scary. We were busy. You were busy? Everybody wanted dry ice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Swamp. So uh, the next question is where do we see things like this happening today and how is mankind affected? Well, there's the blackout. You mentioned the uh, the fires uh, affecting here. Um, let me show you some pictures of northern China. Smog. Imagine California. Yeah. There's really nice. There too. Sometimes when the volcanoes erupt, they'll block up the smog. Those would be ways that the light shining during the day, the sun and the moon would be affected. And, and if this was uh, over a large portion, what would it do to our power grid? Ooh. Would put a strain on it, wouldn't it? Well, look what happened in Texas that one winter. The whole state went. So here, here again, we see things of the natural world being affected in mankind tangentially because of it. So we're not unaffected. It does affect us. But these things are directed on the natural world. How about uh, seasonal affective disorder or whatever it's called? What happens when you don't? When you don't get the sun. Depression. Yeah. Depression. Yeah. Here's another picture of how that would be. You know, when, when um, COVID first hit, though, a lot of that was good because people weren't going out and doing anything. You know, it actually did clear. It, it did clear, clear up, yeah. in China and the, and the rivers. And... There was a blessing in disguise there to some extent. Mm -hmm. On the, uh, the next uh, bullet point on your outline, and all four of these plagues brought on and warned by the trumpet angels, the effect is on nature, but each also adversely affects mankind. So what is Jesus' purpose in these things? Warning. Warning for who? Unbeliever. The, the unbeliever. To, to do what? To turn to the belief in God. Jesus. Because in all God of these, is powerful and he can... <laughs> Because in all of these things, can mankind solve the problems? No, it's beyond man. So that's how it affects unbelievers. What about does it have any effect on believers? Let's strengthen. It forces us to turn from our self-satisfied lifestyle that we fall in and turn back to the Lord and stay close to him. It also tells us that as these things are happening, which Christ told us would happen, what's the one event that we're all waiting for that will happen? His return. His return. Just as these things are happening now, know that Christ will return one day. And that's our hope. Any that are affected to the point of losing their life, if they're unbelievers and they die in unbelief, that's judgment. If they're believers and they die in faith, you enter the church trial. It's joy. Questions or comments? Let's look at verse 13. Then I looked and I heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead. Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth at the blasts of the other trumpets that are that the three angels are about to blow. Notice how many woes? Three. three. How many trumpets you have to blow? Three. Three. Grabbing each one. So here we have an angel. And I told you before, there are certain people that look at this as a timeline and they say, all of a sudden, here's the United States of America. It's an eagle, right? No. The United States of America wouldn't have meant anything to people in John's day. 
And in fact, uh, thank John Berger for this back uh, when he was still here. Uh, Eagle was one of the standards for Rome. So if it was going to represent any country, it would represent Rome, but it does not. We'll talk about it. What's the significance of the eagle? We'll talk about it. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to follow our, our, our outline here. What is different about this message and the things that it delivers compared to the other ones? It was more of a warning and it wasn't delivered by an angel. Yeah, very good. Good catch, Ruth. Yep. There's no angel here. There's a created, created animal, a bee, an eagle, a bird of prey talking and delivering warnings to flying overhead, delivering warnings to who? Inhabitants of Earth. Everybody on Earth, right. He's like, who, who I feel sorry for you. Yeah, so what does that tell us about the next three trumpets? It's going to be worse than what we got already. And it'd, be delivered, it'd be directed to people to uh... brace yourself, right? The worst is yet to come. Has uh, next point on your outline is there any precedent for animals speaking in scripture? Mm -hmm. And for that, we have uh, Numbers 22. <laughs> there it no. is. There it is. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with a staff. He's on his way to Balak, who is a king of the Moabites, and wants uh, Balaam, who's a prophet, to curse Israel. And God said, you don't go do that. And then finally let him go, but you say what I want to say. And somewhere along the way, obviously, uh, Balaam decided he was going to say whatever paid him the money. And this is the Lord warning him. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she said to Balaam, why have I done, what have I done to you that you struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, because you have made a fool of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand for then I would kill you. Balaam has some anger issues. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the donkey said to Balaam, am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all of your life to this land, this day? And is my habit to treat you this way? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down and fell on his face. So here we have an animal being allowed to speak, and who is he speaking on behalf of? The Lord. The Lord is delivering a warning to Balaam, because if Balaam had would continue on, the angel of the Lord, which is, anybody know who the, who the Christ is? Yeah, the incarnate kind of Christ. Is there with a sword, and uh, Balaam's not going much further. So here we have an eagle too, and I think the the important thing here uh, with a an eagle being a bird of prey, it's a created thing, and so all of these previous uh, trumpet blasts affected things of creation, and so here it is a thing of creation warning mankind. Um, the things that are coming are now going to more directly affect you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to turn the focus on the next trumpet blast from nature to mankind. I think that's the reason why it was a created animal and not an angel. To um, these, these aren't necessarily a trumpet, but it's it's a break in the action to gather yourself and prepare yourself for what's to come. Questions or comments? Cool. We finished up chapter eight. How about we go on to chapter nine? Are you game? For those of you that have sheets, pull your sheets out. Pastor will pull his sheet out. All right. So if you look on your study guide, there's a little recap there because I wasn't sure how far we would get. So some of this you already know, but let's uh, let's read through it anyway. 
Chapter 8 begins with the opening of the seventh seal from the scroll given to Christ on the throne. Uh, well, you know what? You're, this is fresh in your memory. You can look at it later. We've already gone through all this, so I'm not going to waste your time. All right, but it's there. So let's now read. Somebody volunteer to read Revelation chapter 9, read verses 1 through 12. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, Ooh. but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when he stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were, were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces. Their hair like women's hair and their teeth like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. They have tails and stings like scorpions and their power to hurt people for five months is in their tails. They have as king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollon. Sure. The first woe has passed. Behold, two woes are still to come. Okay. Hmm. Are we into some scary stuff now? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. Let's look at it. Now, I. Uh, it says Revelation 8, 1 to 2, but it's actually Revelation 9. So let's start there and look at look closer at the first two verses. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star falling from heaven to earth, and he was given. Notice it was he, not it. The star falling from heaven is a he. And was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace. And I don't have what's on here, but the sun. The sun and the air were darkened with smoke from the shaft. Yeah, good. Forgot to include that. All right. So you look on your study guide there under verses one and two. A star fallen from heaven. Who or what is this? Is we have Christ? some places. Not Christ. We have some places. Yes, I did. We have some places in scripture, and let's uh, look at the first one, which is Luke 10, 17 to 18. Satan. Mm. Somebody want to read that? Returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. This is when the 70 or so disciples went out and preached of the coming kingdom. Jesus sent them out, gave them power to heal the sick and to cast out demons. And when they returned, this was Jesus' comment. They remarked, they said, Jesus, it was amazing. We were able to heal the sick and, and even the demons had to leave uh, by your authority. And he said, uh, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Satan was falling as his disciples went out and preached the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now, for a little extra credit, why would preaching the gospel make Satan fall from heaven? Got people to believe. The, the word, it's, a, it's good to know that the name Satan comes from a Hebrew word meaning accuser. 
So what does Satan accuse before God and who? <clears throat> You. This is us. You. Very good, Norma. Your sins. Our sins, yeah. Especially those who don't believe in Christ because all their sins still lay on them. But because of the gospel, can Satan accuse you of your sins anymore? No. 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 How far have they been separated? From the east to the west. And he remembers them no more. So as the gospel is preached, and, and think of the, this is all symbolic. So it's not Satan actually falling from heaven, but he has no place and no job for those who believe in Christ. He has nothing. He can't accuse them because Christ steps up and says, I took that. They're forgiven. So here we have Jesus talking about how Satan is falling from heaven. John, once again, he's describing symbolic things. So we should never imagine looking out and seeing Satan fall Satan. like a star from heaven. It's symbolic of a spiritual truth, and that's the spiritual truth. We can also look to Isaiah 14, 12. Somebody want to read that? We are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn, how you are cut down to the ground. You had laid the nations low. Daystar. Um, oh, okay. Yep. Daystar is another uh, moniker for Satan. And you see this because uh, the Latin Vulgate, which was the Latin translation of Hebrew, done a long time ago, uh, kind of inaccurate. It's what King James Version was built off of. But the uh, Latin translation of the Hebrew word meaning Daystar is where we get the name Lucifer. Hey, sir. So that picture falling from heaven is Lucifer. See, there's a note at the bottom of your study guide. <laughs> Esther, before you yeah. go on, do you have the verses on the screen? Because we're not getting it. We're just getting or on my screen. It just says Revelation explaining the scary stuff. Chapter nine. It's not showing the verses. We're not seeing the separate slides. Okay, did it all go away now? Yep. All right, yeah. let's, let's try it again. Thank you for saying something. Let me, uh, let me once again do a little maintenance here. So was Satan at one time in the Lord's good graces? Satan was an angel who was created perfect. And uh, you know, when did he, I guess, what, what, where, what made him leave heaven or, you know, or I mean, become Satan? He you know, made him. And, and not in disbelief. He, he made him. So uh, God created all the angels sometime in that, those first six days. We don't really know who when. Up until the end of the sixth day, everything was perfect. So sometime before that, Satan decided that he should be worshipped like God. And the things that should worship him were God's pinnacle of creation, which is us. That he deserved to be worshipped by us. And God would not allow that. And Satan fell from grace when he desired worship that should only belong to God. <clears throat> he is forever condemned. And a portion of the angels followed him into condemnation. We don't know how many, but a goodly number. The good angels outweigh the bad angels, and they follow God. So kind of the lines are set now. No other angels fall. Satan and his angels will not be redeemed. They are condemned to eternal hell. In fact, hell was created for Satan as his eternal resting place and his eternal suffering place. Not for humans. Humans choose to go there. It was created for Satan. That, that answer your question? Yeah, I just, I mean, you know, I just, you know, I always heard that he was, you know, heaven's most beautiful angel, things like that. And, you know, I guess what, what made him want to, want to leave, you know, and get out of God's good grace and be what Satan is? Um, Pride. Seven, seven. 
Good question. I'm glad you asked. So, uh, uh, Norma, can you see it now? Yes. Good. So, uh, the note at the bottom of our study guide says the shaft of the bottomless pit is translated from the Greek words which mean the pit of the abyss. An unfathomable death, depth, and especially in Jewish thought, the home of the dead and of evil spirits. That's the abyss. That is what's translated in the ESB as a bottomless pit. Am I remembering it right that Satan and his minions? Is that, is that what they, you know, that? That's what, they're, what the demons angels. have been called, yeah, minions. minions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the demons are the fallen angels that yes. with Christ? Or what's Christ? Is that the final Satan? The devil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, on, any other questions? Go ahead, yeah, please speak up and stop if there's anything you... So they can never, even if they wanted to repent for what they did... They don't want to. They could never... No, there's no salvation for the angels. Jesus didn't die for the angels. And he and they, and they know there's no redemption? Yes. And they don't want... <laughs> so... They they know that they know that we who believe in Jesus will be saved. They can never be saved. How do you think they feel about us? They hate us. They hate you. Satan hates you, and wants nothing more than for you to lose your faith and spend eternity with him suffering. And he'll do whatever it takes. He'll act like your friend, whatever it takes to take your focus off Christ. But know that he's not your friend. He hates you. More than any living person in this world hates you. And that's scary. However, we have one that's stronger. We have Christ who defeated Satan on the cross. And he loves you so much he gave his life for you. So as a believer in Christ, you are sealed in your faith. And Satan can't touch you. So no. the, the people that are the, the quote unquote the, the devil worshippers or whatnot, they can never be. Yeah. They can they can repent. Yeah. They 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 can be redeemed. Yeah, human beings. Yes, the Holy Spirit can work on even the darkest of minds and bring faith to bear through the gospel. Many will not. Many will refuse. And keep in mind, it's just, go ahead. What's that? Too bad for them. <laughs> Definitely. And it's not just the devil worshipers. Anybody that, even the nicest person in the world that goes and works at soup kitchens and donates his money to the poor, anybody who is not trusting salvation in Christ alone, by faith alone, through grace alone, they're going there too. Doesn't have to be a devil worshiper. The devil has them lock, stock, and barrel. It's only by faith in Christ that you're saved. Only so, one any, so anyone that believe that goes to a church that isn't Christian, like Jehovah Witness, because yep. they don't believe that Christ is God. Yep. And what about the what about the, the Jewish? Oh, they're lost. They're not. They're so they're lost, even though that was the Lord's people. When 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 Jesus returned and said, "I'm God," and they mm -hmm. said, "No, you're not. We're going to kill you." Yeah. They fell. They don't believe in the Trinity. They still believe in Yahweh. But Christ came and clearly said, I am God. This is who God is to you. And they said no. Now there are Christians, we call them Messianic Jews. They believe, they're saved. But the large number of Jewish people, no, they're lost. They are, they are an active ministry. And, and we in the Lutheran Church, we have a ministry to Jewish people. The gospel is preached to them. And they do come to faith. Yeah, I just, I mean, I, and the reason I ask that is because we, you know, at the prison, you know, they, they do have church services for the inmates that do want to go. Mm -hmm. And they, they look at it as a, you know, they, they don't understand that I'm, I'm going to church. I'm, I'm going to be good. I'm, you know, I'm saved. But it's not given to them like that. It's just, it's just you know, it's just like a, like a Bible study. They just read the Bible and they, you know, they say whatnot, but they don't understand the true meaning. 
Is it is an ecumenical service? Is it Christians and Jews and anybody that wants to come? Pretty much, that's pretty service? much anybody that I mean. We, there's um, that's about a room, about a quarter of the size. But I mean, there's Muslim, there's Jewish, you know, anybody that's quote unquote of faith. Um, they, but they they look at that as that's they're going to be saved and that they're going to. But it's it's like a Unitarian church. It's just kind of yeah, it's kind of like a saved by who. See, this is it. It's not taught that way. It's not. It's Can't wrong. Who who are you worshiping? Some people are worshiping the, the the Jewish God. Some people are worshiping Allah. Some be may maybe they're worshiping one of the uh, uh, Vishnu or one of the Hindu gods. Yeah, it's, Some may be worshiping Shirley MacLaine God, kind of uh, <laughs> a force. But it's just it's you know it's kind of sad because you know like I said every once in a while I'll see them and I'll see the service and I'm just like it's not. They might what, as what I was taught. They might as well be worshiping the devil because they're not worshiping anybody. It's, yeah, and you know these are some truly Hebrew people that that you know are doing this, and that's what I say. It's they they think they're being saved. You know, I'm gonna I'm doing this, and but they're not really because they're not being taught. You know, the Trinity and what's what's right to believe. So. Paul talks about what itching ears want to hear. So they've got somebody in there telling them what they want to hear, and they don't have to change. They can believe in whoever they want. Where we, how do we start our worship service off? In the name of Father and the Holy Spirit. We clearly tell this is who God is to us, and this is who we worship, because this is how He has revealed Himself to us. Question: Where does the word hell come from? If everything Hell. Hell? Yes. That's a good question. Next. <laughs> um, hell, hell is, uh, it depends. Hell can be translated from a couple different words. As I remember, it can mean, uh, sometimes it's translated for a word that means the place just where dead, where dead people go, that you're dead, you're no longer on the earth. It's not designated as those who have gone to be with Christ or not. It's just, really? yeah, it can be a very general concept. It can also sometimes mean, uh, in some people's minds, it's the eternal lake of fire. It's where you'll suffer forever. For others, it, it sometimes it means um, where the souls of those who are lost, where they abide until the last day. Because those who don't believe, their souls are not with Jesus, but they're someplace else. And uh, they'll be raised from the dead, not in a in glorified bodies like us, but in bodies that they will suffer in hell forever, eternal lake of fire forever. I try not to use hell for that reason because it's it can be very not. general. You only only in scripture. It's not, is it mentioned in scripture? Is it? Well, it's it, it's it's it's, tra it's translated from several different Greek words. So oh. if it's if it's New Testament, what is, oh. but hell, the word H E L L. No, yeah. it's 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 not a, a it's not a, a Greek word. <laughs> Why would they it's not in Michigan. Hell, Michigan. So this is not it, hell. It's not uh, any Jesus. part of the abyss or anything like that. It, and keep in mind, the, this is not a temporal place. It's in other words, you're, you're, you're not going to go out and find a pit out in the backyard that goes it's bottomless and all the angels are all the evil angels. It, it's just where they are apart from God and they're under His control and they're limited in their power. Because kind of you used to, they used to throw prisoners in a pit, right? Yeah, that's where you kept them for holding. Uh, the the devil and and the demons are kept under control by God, only allowed to do what He says they can do. But we're going to find here at some point they're going to be allowed to do more. So once again, John is speaking symbolically of spiritual truths that are hard for us to understand, but that's what's going on. So don't think of a, a literal pit. Yeah, they, 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 said they are they get trouble. They call it a home the hole. I'm yeah. in the hole for 30 days. I'm in the pit for 30 days. But yeah, it's, they, they use it quite regularly. Good question. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we did. Yeah, th this is not necessarily hell. This is just where the demons are. It's not, don't don't think of it even as the place where those who have died out of faith are. This is just the, the, the demons under control. All right. So, uh, on to the next point. Satan is the one that's falling. And what does he have? Verse 1. The key 
Key to what? Bottomless pit. Right. Bottomless pit is not a physical location. It's a spiritual reality. So what is he given the power to do? And opening it, if, if this is where the demons are, what does opening symbolically mean? They get, they get their ropes cut. He's allowed to let them loose. Since he is falling from heaven, and all this is happening because the Lord Jesus Christ declares it must happen. Who did he receive this power to let the demons loose from? God. God. Yes, from Jesus. That's the only reason he can do it. Christ is allowing him to do it. And we saw all of these things are happening. Why? Because these things, repeat this with me. These things, these things, these must, things happen must happen must before, before Christ, Christ returns. Return. Christ 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 Christ. These demons, as they are allowed more freedom, are going to do those things that are necessary to happen before Christ returns for his own purpose, which is for the good of the church. So he's letting demons loose. That's the other question uh, under this bullet point. Um, what's pictured here then is increased satanic activity. Remember when we had the, the timeline of Revelation, I showed you what we believe. And there's that thousand years, which is what we're in now, the time of the church. And as we got closer to the end, there was a little thing called Satan's little season. Welcome to Satan's little season. A time when Satan and the demons are allowed more freedom to do more havoc. Now, once again, this thing is happening throughout all the time from Christ's ascension until his return. But it concentrates more and more as we get closer to the end. But if you look in history, there's times when things have gotten really evil, right? Mm -hmm. Hitler yeah. and the concentration camps. And did that last forever? No. no. Bosnia and the ethnic cleansing? No. Did that last forever? No. Ukraine? Did that last forever? No. Double would like you to think it will. But can its effects still be felt? Though? Yeah. The effects of all those, yeah, good point, James. The effect of the Holocaust is still felt, and it needs to be. God forbid that we ever forget it, because otherwise, what will happen? Happen again. Hard, in in all these other things, like with all the other places of ethnic cleansing, it has. And there are parts of the Muslim culture that does never believe that there really was a Holocaust. Yeah. Was just, yep. Even to this day. Yeah. Or it's like the radio, the radio guy who doesn't believe Sandy Hook happened. And, you know, so yeah. it's, yeah, it's crazy. He, he had to recant that. Yeah. He had to get his words. $75 million later. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know, like when you look at this country and um, it's like the Christians now, if you believe in the morals and ethical things of, of a Christian. They, you're ridiculed. Like you're a bad person. And those people on TV that quote are Christians, but yet it's okay for abortions forever. And it's okay to, to be gay, to be cross gender, all that stuff. That's, that's okie dokie. And as a Christian, if you believe it's wrong, then you're a terrible person. Mm -hmm. So it's like the tides have turned from Christian morals and values to anything goes. Because mm -hmm. don't make anybody feel bad about themselves. And it's okay, it's okay to, for a Muslim to pray a million times, but let's keep that Bible hidden and let's not have prayer services in the church. I have to say I was really kind of impressed with my 50th class reunion because we had a pastor there that said a prayer before dinner and stuff and so you still see it but it's kind of scary when you think about what's acceptable and actually true christianity is not acceptable in this country we'll get into that as we get into uh some of the symbolic looks at the beasts uh if you've ever read Revelation, there's a beast from the sea and a beast from the land. That's satanic activity within government and culture. And you're seeing that right now. Um, 
You can espouse any view that you want as long as it's not Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People can talk anti-abortion all you want, transgenderism all you want, but if you talk about our belief on those things, even if we're not saying that that person is transgender because he's condemned to hell, but just by stating this is not right in the eyes of the Lord, you're condemned. You can't say that. Welcome to Revelation. It's happening now. And it's only going to get worse. And isn't it, it seems to be that way in most countries, too. It's not just in America. Yep. Well, I heard that, uh, you know, the death of Queen Elizabeth, because she has such a high moral standing in the head of the church that the, the church in, in of itself is going to change dramatically. So because of, you know, that old time value was gone, she, she upheld these morals and it's not going to be what it was. And it just kind of opens the door for everything that happened. I thought that was kind of, wow, I was thinking about it. It's rather enlightening. Well, we're watching The Crown. Yeah. And, yeah. I was like, wow, it's uh you see you know, the way they church and state, there's no separation. It's true fancy. Looking back at our outline, uh, the next bullet point. Let's talk about the uh, smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with smoke from the shaft. So we've got a great furnace here, right? What might the great furnace represent? We think about the devil and demons. We talk about a furnace. What do we think about? We think about hell, but you just said that doesn't really exist. Well, it doesn't exist, but the depths of hell, which is the eternal home of the devil and the demons. Mm -hmm. So kind of what you have here is hell being loosed on earth, pure evil. And and what is hell then? Why why do the demons have to go there? What will, what will happen to them there? Get their feathers ruffled. They will definitely suffer. It's the judgment of God upon their evil. And so now you have the shaft open and smoke uh, from this great furnace. You have God's judgment that's going to be poured out through the devil and the demons. God's judgment on evil by evil creatures. <clears throat> What might the smoke that darkens, darkens the earth represent that? The burning of bad souls. What, and you, do you recall uh, darkness in scripture, what darkness represents? Let's look at a couple of verses here. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? So what sense is darkness being used here? Bad, evil. Darkness of unbelief. Mm -hmm. Their minds are darkened. They can't understand the truth of God, nor do they want to. So that smoke represents the darkness of unbelief. And what is it doing? Spreading across the world. Faith, what was your comment? That, that these kind of problems against the church and morals is happening where? Across the world, not just here. Welcome to Revelation. One person that speaks out against um, gays and stuff is Putin, and like you're going to really follow that, that because he's not Christian. No. He just doesn't like gay. Let's he look at the, uh, yeah, see, that's not the love of Christ there. Is no. It? Let's look at Genesis 19. Somebody want to read verses 27 to 28. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. And he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the valley. And he looked, and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? They were destroyed. Completely. Why? And brimstone because they were so evil. Some of us is God's wrath against evil. God's judgment. God's judgment on sin. So that's what the smoke represents. Darkness of unbelief and God also God's wrath and, and, and judgment on evil. And that's going to come through the work of the devil and the beast. 
Questions, comments? I'm kind of confused. Okay. Uh, so I'm hearing two different things and you just said it, that um, smoke represents, am I hearing it right that it, it represents two, the unbelief and God's judgment? Yep. Well, darkness represents unbelief. Smoke, uh, yeah, darkness represents yeah. unbelief. Yeah. Smoke represents uh, God's, uh, the effect of God's judgment upon evil. As we okay. look at Sodom and Gomorrah, all that was left was smoke coming up from where the, the town yeah. used to be because it was utterly destroyed. That's the symbol of God's judgment on evil. Does that help? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for clearing me up on that. It's not your your uh, Bible passages aren't going down, you know, with you. <laughs> What's that? It's not showing the Bible passages you're on. It's still showing slide eight. It is. I'm sorry. I don't know what's up with this. I have Genesis 19, 27 to 28. It's still showing slide. Uh, what does it say at the top of your slide? Revelations 8, verses 1 and 2. So now you don't see uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14? No. no. Ah. Well, we're about out of time. Sorry, I don't know what's up with this. The computer does not appear to want to work right with you guys. You using an apple? No. <laughs> can you see the slide itself on the screen or do you see the slide and a bunch of stuff on the left? Both. Yeah, we see the preview. Now we see you. <laughs> I mean, I, I see Jill and, and Gr Gray. Gary. Well, we're almost done, but let me let me do a little uh let me try to do a little maintenance here again and see if I can't get it on the screen and have it work right for next time. Okay, so uh, we'll, Ruth we'll and Fred are napping. What's that? Ruth and Fred are napping. <laughs> I put them to sleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just a moment here. Because it was working right before. Yeah. But when you turn to chapter nine, that's part of the. <laughs> is the devil telling? <laughs> yeah, Satan doesn't like us talking about him. Oh, no. All right, I'm going to try to put it back up on the screen another time and let's see if we can scroll through and if you guys see it, okay? Yep. All right, we can see it here. No. Nope. Oh, you we can't. see you. Yeah, you can't see it yet, but you will. I hope. <laughs> let's try that. Now, do you see the opening slide with a bunch of things on the left? Yes. Yeah. Let's see if we can get the slide to fill the screen. You guys see it? Yeah. Yes. Revelations exploring the scary stuff and Is the it? prayer. Okay. It, but uh, it, it's not showing yeah. the slideshow. Praying hands. What do you see Praying now? Hands. Yeah. We see that where you can put the notes and stuff on the right hand side. Okay. You don't see the praying hands? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yes, we yeah. do. There's like three parts to the screen. Huh. Okay. So you see. Uh, um,
Time to call it a night. <laughs> yep. your, your computer's giving you a fit. Time to call it a night. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing because I didn't change any settings and it's uh, it's not operating the way it did last time. Um, tell you what, let's do this. Let's officially close. And then if one or two of you Zoomites would stay on the line and I'll, I'll try to see if we can figure it out for next time. If you all want to go, you can go. Up to you. But let's close with prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, despite uh, technical issues, uh, the message goes out. You are a gracious and loving God, but you're a just God. Boy. Sin must be punished. Yes. But you desire that no one, no one spend an eternity in hell. You, you created that for the devil and his demons. Instead, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to free our, so that our sins would be forgiven and that we could join you in eternal life. May that be the message we go home with. As all these scary things happen, may they be a reminder of you that you rule over all of these things and you protect your church from all of these things. And even if the worst and scariest things ends our life on this earth, you take our soul to be with you and you promise eternal life to come. May we live in that hope and in that faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Until the next time. Somebody on. Uh, so somebody now you're. Stay on Zoom. I'm going to try something uh, else again, okay? Okay. Okay. Let's stay. What do you see now? Now it's right. Now you're in the slideshow. He says Revelation explain. Then you're, yeah. Now the prayer. Yeah, well, Recap from previous chapters. Okay. Read That's Revelations. That's what I needed to do. Thank you very much. All of you Zoomites have a great evening. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Good night, Good night, Good night Fred. Bye. Ruth, what's the name of the show? Did you hear a baby? I'll, I'll text her. Okay. Night, highlights. Night.